So team, keep it clean. It's March 23rd, so you know what that means. Today is obviously a very special day uh, for me personally because today marks the day where we're supposed to be eligible to reapply for monetization with YouTube again. Uh, so this morning, um, or last night actually, went to sleep maybe about 11 or something uh, and wasn't thinking about it, but my body woke me up at like 12.30. And I was like, oh, hold up. I, it's time. It's officially the 23rd. So I went to YouTube to go reapply, but the reapply button was not accessible to me. So I was like, huh. Then I was thinking, okay, okay, well, well, well maybe well, YouTube, I know their uh, headquarters is in California, so maybe they, they three hours back. So, all right, cool. I go to sleep. Uh, if I wake up around three, cool. If not, then cool. I just do it in the morning. Went to sleep. Carter's a little bit sick right now, unfortunately, so he started coughing. Woke up, took care of him. Then after he was straight, Went to go reapply because it was after 3 o'clock a.m. So I go to look on YouTube and the reapply button still not accessible to me. Oh, okay. All right. So then I'm like, all right, I just sleep on it. Wake up tomorrow morning. Whatever. Cool. See what, it, see what it's looking like. Go to sleep. Wake up today. <laughs> it's still not accessible. So I haven't been able to reapply yet. Reached out to their support team and they, it, it was a lot of the run around. Um, they didn't give me any detailed information. Uh, a lot of it was information that I just got to assume for myself, like I did this morning, because I assumed that, all right, 12 a.m., that's when it's going to be March 23rd, I'll be good. Nope. All right, maybe YouTube, they three hours back because they over there in California. Nope. All right, wake up in the morning, going to be straight. Nope. And then when I talked to chat support, they were like, oh, well, uh, it should be available within the next 24 hours. Like, but that doesn't make any sense. Why isn't it available now? And they were like, oh, well, we operate on Pacific Pacific time. I'm thinking, okay, well, I asked them, what are your hours of operation? What are YouTube's hours of operation? She's like, oh, we, we are open 24-7. So I'm like, exactly. So it should be available now. They're like, oh, yes, within 24 hours it should be. And it's just been... It's been a process. As y'all know, it's been a very frustrating process. It's been a process where I've had a lack of solid information. I've had a lack of detailed information. Uh, and that's made it that much more frustrating. And I know a lot of people can say the same thing when it's come to the negotiations between Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. There's been a lack of solid information. And I know a lot of fans are frustrated. A lot of fans have been upset. A lot of fans have just been tired, exhausted with this entire process. But just like with YouTube and just like with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, we just got to wait it out a little bit longer. So we'll see how things go. But in today's special episode of Questions from Subs, our first question is going to start with somebody who thinks that this could be the holdup uh, that Lamar Jackson is really waiting on when it comes to signing a deal with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, but before we get into that, I got to give a special shout out to the newest team. Keep it clean. Patron. My guy, DJ Devin J. Uh, appreciate you becoming a Team Keep It Clean patron, my friend. Thank you for that. And if any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to, that's fine as well. And real quick, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. I know there's a lot of people that be watching, which we appreciate, but make sure you subscribe too. So you can turn the notifications on so you don't miss a video. Because there's a lot of videos sometimes, especially depending on the day. But turn on them notifications, subscribe, so you don't miss nothing. Because I don't be wanting nobody to miss nothing. I feel bad when people miss stuff. But then at the same time, I'd be like, well, that's on you. You didn't subscribe. You ain't turning notifications on. So it ain't on me. I love you, but it ain't my fault. But anyway, first question came from Maurice, who's been a patron for 22 days. So I appreciate it, Maurice. Said him, hey, engraving, first time writing. Love your work, so please keep it up. I appreciate it, Maurice. Thank you. Uh, do you agree that the situation the Ravens and Lamar are in right now is a difficult one? <laughs> well, yeah, certainly, but continuing. He said, because on the one hand, the Ravens and Lamar want that big body wide out that can change your offense. No offense to Rashad, but counting on durability can come with a hefty price. See last season. Um, now, first, we'll, we'll go piece by piece with this. Ravens and Lamar want that big body wide out that can change your offense. Do the Ravens? Do they want it? I don't know. I don't, I don't, it don't really seem like it, but I don't, I, we don't know. We don't know. Based off of how they've operated over the years, I would say no um, because they just it, it seems like they just simply don't know how to operate when it comes to a big receiver. They don't know what to do with him. You remember Darren Waller? He was a, he was a, he was a receiver before he was a tight end. 
Ravens ain't know what to do. They, whoa, six five. What do we do with this? But they changed him to tight end, and that elevated his career in the long run. Miles Boykin, they ain't know what to do with him. Six five wide receiver. They, what do we do with this? And I just think about guys over the years like uh, Clarence Moore, um, guys that they drafted. Uh, but as far as guys that they brought in, I remember they brought in T.J. Hushmanzada. He wasn't no small receiver. What was he like? Six three, six two, six three. Oh, well, maybe six four. I don't remember. But um, anyway, uh, I I don't know if that's what Ravens are looking for. And with Lamar, um, we don't know either. I remember there have been times in the past where he sort of flirted on social media with D.K. Metcalf uh, when when he was going through his thing with the Seahawks, but they of course re-signed him. Um, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know. We don't know what Lamar was. Maybe when he does his interview, maybe he can let us know. Uh, anyway, uh, and then he said, "No offense to Rashad, but counting on durability can come with a hefty price." See last season, and yeah, I know. Um, the Ravens they they put all their chips in with Rashad Bateman last year, <laughs> and I didn't think it was a good idea. We said it before the season started, um, and it just didn't end up working out. And we love Rashad Bateman. I um, think he's going to be really nice. Uh, but it just it didn't work out. So uh, hopefully it will this season. Because, again, with two of the biggest Ravens, two of the most impactful Ravens players, Lamar Jackson, Rashad Bateman, both past two years have dealt with injuries, have missed about like five games each year the past two years. Not good. Um, but both of those players – in college, throughout their collegiate career, no injury problems, no injury issues. <laughs> they come to the Ravens and it's like, whoa, what happened to my body? So hopefully uh, with some changes that are made, uh, both of those players can remain healthy. And as far as Lamar, whether that's with the Ravens or his next team, we'll see. Uh, and with Rashad Bateman, i got to say the same thing too, whether it's with the Ravens or his next team, we'll see. Because when he called out, Eric DeCosta and them And just spoke on that whole thing Oof You know they saw that We all saw it So they saw it too Anyway continuing He said but on the other hand You gotta make investments to get one So is it realistic That Lamar wants to see If the Ravens really invest Before signing that contract And if so Should the Ravens risk the investment To let's say Comfort Lamar Would love your opinion on this uh, Best from Germany Oh from Germany I oh, appreciate that Maurice Alright so um, Is it realistic that Lamar wants to see If the Ravens really invest Before signing that contract That would be something um, Because Right now Like He could be He could be You know what that's, that's funny That's something that we had talked about uh, Throughout last offseason um, And then going into this offseason too That it's deeper than money Obviously money is the biggest thing and, I mean, if, if they cut the check big enough, then Lamar could be like, hey, thank you for cutting the check. Appreciate it. Y'all want to invest? Cool. If not, hey, we can, we still keep doing what we're doing. At least I'm getting compensated for it now. So I, I think that is, first and foremost, the biggest thing. He, I think he just wants his compensation, and he wants a lot of his compensation up front, like guaranteed, like straight up. Not, not like, oh, most likely guaranteed, but no, guaranteed straight up. That's what it seems to be. Now, not even a fully guaranteed, but just a lot guaranteed straight up from jump. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, but as far as the investments, um, I, I would like to think that. But and I mean, because I, I would like to uh, I would like to see that. I've been wanting to see that for a long time, uh, especially at the wide receiver position. Um, but I, I think it, it definitely should have been something that they risked already even though i don't really think it will be a risk because you've already seen what lamar can do without solid investments at the receiver position um because again they spent the draft capital there as we know they spent a lot of draft capital there but it's quality over quantity appreciate the tries appreciate the attempts uh but you have a track record ravens know their track record and i appreciate them still trying to change their track record and they've been getting a little better because, again, with Hollywood, that track record was changing. With Rashad Bateman, it was changing. Um, Devin DuVernay, uh, not really because, they, they, again, that's somebody else. And he's not over six. I mean, no, he's not six four, six five. He's a shorter receiver. But it's like they still don't know how to consistent, consistently use him. We'll see if with a new offense that changes. Um, 
But I, I think this should have been something that should have been done. But it, it, could Lamar be waiting on that before signing? No, I, I think it's definitely more so about the money, um, about the financial investment and not necessarily the personnel investment, even though I'm sure that Lamar would love if they invested personnel wise a lot more into the wide receiver position, too. And I, I would never expect him to come out and say it like he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna, he don't throw nobody under the bus. That's one thing about him. He ain't going to throw nobody under the bus. So, well, except Greg Roman that one time when he said, hey, they be calling out our plays. They know our plays. But besides that, he don't be throwing nobody under the bus. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect him to come out and say, hey, like, man, Ravens, get some more receivers. At least not not publicly. Privately, maybe. Hey, who knows what how the conversations are with him and Eric DaCosta. Who knows? Only they know. Because, uh, again, they've been keeping this thing under wraps uh, for the longest. We've been hearing rumors and stuff. But nothing concrete. We've been hearing reports and stuff. Nothing concrete. And there's so much that we just we just don't know. And it, again, it's funny that the um the most recent update on any contract that we hear about is something that apparently was offered at last season. At the, I mean, at the beginning of this past season, that was in September. We we are in the end of March, and we were all getting up in arms about something that happened this past September. That's the information that we found out. That's how that's how funny this whole thing is, but um, but yeah, man, I I, I think I don't think the holdup is as, is an investment in personnel, but I think it's more so just investment with that bread. Let's get into this episode of questions from subs. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Well, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. So team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Question from Subs, a series where you can ask any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. But if you're a patron, you ain't got to send an email. You can send it directly on Patreon. And speaking of the Team Keep It Clean patrons, which I appreciate y'all, especially <laughs> given the situation. Um, next question came from a patron, my guy Bill. He, he's been a patron for 22 days, so appreciate it, Bill. He said, good afternoon, Engraven. Hey, hope all is well with you and the fam. My question is this. Why are the Ravens not working on getting a veteran wide receiver in? I hear people say it's because of Lamar. I don't agree with that, though. Uh, no matter who the QB is uh, going to be, they still need to address the wide receiver position, not just in the draft. They can still rework some contracts to get both done. I agree. I agree with you spot on. Now, we, we don't know what they're working on as far as wide receiver. Yeah, they, they did bring in Nelson Aguilar for a visit, and he could be a solid complimentary receiver, obviously not the guy. But um, we just don't know. We don't know. Uh, we've been seeing different receivers uh, come out of free agency. Some get traded like Elijah Moore. He got traded yesterday. McCole Hartman got signed. Alan Lazard, Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, the list goes on. I can't think of everybody off the top of my head right now. But this receiver, oh, Jacoby Myers, that's another one. The receiver market, it's been, it's been decent. Um, it's, it's been going. It ain't been crazy uh, like it was last year. Last year, who it set the world on fire. But this year has been a lot more cool. Um, but the Ravens just, they ain't been making no moves. And, I mean, they ain't been making any moves for anything. But it's, I think it's one of those things, like, we won't truly know till we truly know. Uh, we won't know till like it's obviously till it's official. Maybe we might hear of a, a visit. We might hear we've heard reports of them being interested in Odell Beckham Jr. Um, but it's one of them things we won't know till we know. So um, we just gotta wait. We gotta wait it out and hope, <laughs> hope that they truly make an investment there because you're you're spot on. You are a thousand percent right. No matter who the quarterback is, whether it's Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley. Anthony Brown, Stetson Ben, whoever. Well, the quarterback about to be, man. Hey, they they gonna need some people to throw to. Our right, next question came from my guy Anthony. He said LJ exclusive interview. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope everything's good." Quick, simple question: What do you think or hope Lamar speaks on in his exclusive interview? God bless and take care. Appreciate it, Ant. Uh, and also from my guy Jay Fire, he said, "Hey, Engraven, it's your boy Jay Fire. Hope you and the fam are doing well. Have you seen the news about Lamar Jackson releasing an interview of himself?" Uh, and he said, "There's a YouTube and Instagram video you could check out. What do you think about this? And also, do you think Lamar has played his last down for the Ravens already?" Thanks, man. And stay blessed. Appreciate it. So, Lamar Jackson and this interview topic of conversation, uh, and we'll see what it's about. We'll see what he says. 
Um, I do think uh, that he will say some significant stuff. I don't think it's just going to be um, general basic questions, or anything like that. Because when you think about it, Lamar doesn't obviously doesn't do much press. Lamar doesn't do much talking. I mean, he'll come on Twitter and say some stuff real quick here and there, but he don't do much of that. He don't do much talking. So when he does talk, like he, I would expect him to say something significant, especially if he's hyping this thing up, especially if he's been promoting this thing like he did. So he and he knows people know about it now. So it's like, OK, so he, he's he's setting everybody up for something. So he, he I, I definitely expect him to say something significant in regards to the contract, in regards to in regards to some it, it had there has to be some significant by the way this thing is just being pushed uh, to everybody. Well, I mean, he only pushed it that one day, but I mean, he he does cause a lot of uh, he, 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 gain, he garners a lot of attention from everybody and he knows that. So he used that to tell everybody about, hey, I'm dropping this interview. So. Stay tuned. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay tuned. So whenever it does drop, we're going to be watching. Yeah, I mean, y'all already know. We're going to watch it, check it out. I mean, I, he, he should have just did it with us. Like, we, we both down here in South Florida. LeBron could have easily came through. Man, what? That would have been so easy, man. But it's okay. Next time, man. Next time. But we we looking forward to it to see whatever it is that he got to say about whatever he got something to say it about. Next question came from Mary Ann. She said, I am 81 years old, was a Baltimore Colts fan, and since they have been our team, a Ravens fan. Uh, I did love Lamar, but what is happening today is making me a little ill. So many of us are having it hard buying groceries and the things we need, not just want. And seeing Lamar haggling over hundreds of millions of dollars just amazes me. And I have lost respect for him and now hope he does move on. If we pay him his guaranteed money, can we afford any other players? Oof. All right. Well, Mary, she's coming through strong. Um, and yes, to answer that second question, yes, they can definitely afford to pay other players as well. Just because when, when you pay somebody guaranteed money, it, it ain't going to like kill the team or anything like that. You can still make moves. You just got to move different. You got to be a little more creative than you normally would be. Uh, depending on how much money you allocate to that player every year, how much and how much of it is guaranteed to that player every year. Now, just to back up, um, so many of us are having it hard buying groceries and the things we need. That's true. It's, 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 it's tough out here. It really is tough. Um, and she said, and seeing Lamar haggling over hundreds of millions of dollars just amazes me. And you you lost respect for him. Now, I, I, I think that's unfortunate. Um, with football, with NFL, it is a, a billion dollar business. Um, and these play, they, they obviously make a whole lot of money. They make a whole lot of money to be uh, public punching bags. Um, they make a whole lot of money uh, for our entertainment. Uh, they make a whole lot of money literally putting their, their bodies on the line uh, every Sunday or Monday or Thursday or some, in some cases Wednesdays. Because you know, remember that COVID game on that Wednesday, Steelers and Ravens at like 3 p.m. So like, anyway. Um, so they, they are in a different tax bracket than the most of us. Um, so I, uh, it's, it's, it's like the same thing, but just on a different level. Like if somebody was having issues at their job and they wanted a raise, but Hey, their, their job only wanted to give them this amount, but they felt like they deserved this amount and they going back and forth. It's, it's the same thing, but just in a different setting and in, in a different tax bracket. Um, so yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I don't agree with the, the losing respect. Um, I, I think that part obviously definitely comes from, I mean, just being a, a frustrated fan at the whole thing. And, um, and, and I, I, I get it that it's, it's, it's tough because it, it can be tough to relate to the players on the financial level because we can't relate to the players on a financial level, even practice squad players, they making a lot of money too. Um, so I, I, I get that. And, and, I, I I respect what you're saying, um, but it's it's just different. It, it's it's different because again they in a completely different tax bracket. Uh, their their jobs they make, they make a lot more money than a lot of us um, than most of us. Uh, and it, again, it's just one percent. It's one percent of people that make it to the NFL. They could be playing football their whole lives. They could have the best trainers, best practice. Um, could be one of the best on their team, little league. In high school, all that stuff, college, but 
It's not a guarantee that you're only 1% of people make it. Um, so it's obviously not a very saturated field, uh, the NFL, uh, but they, they make the big bucks. Um, I, I know I, I can't change your opinion on how you feel about Lamar, maybe just the NFL in general. Um, but I guess I can, I can just give mine. And like I said, it's just, it's different. It, it's, it's, it's a lot of the same things. That's why whenever, um, especially talking about the business side of football, whenever we speak about that, um, I try to relate in experiences that I've been through um, when it comes to business, when it, come, when it comes to uh, having worked in different fields and whatnot and having gone through some different things in the business world, in the working world. Um, and I, I try to put myself in their shoes. I mean, <laughs> again, those are some big shoes, some big money to fill. I can't fit that. But that's how I try to get it. So. I think if we did that again, like I said, obviously we, we can't relate to the tax bracket that they're in, but um, that that's that's what helps me. So maybe uh, I don't if maybe if you looked at it that way, uh, it may help you get that respect back. Um, but just remember, at the end of the day, it's business and it's it's not personal at all. Let's keep them. Next question came from my guy David. He said, "Engraven, I uh, hope by the time you read this, you're no longer a freelancer." <laughs> I said, I was hoping, but we'll see, man. YouTube can't afford to lose such a positive presence in a great show. I appreciate it, David. Uh, <clears throat> I know there's plenty of reasons why Lamar should, could, should, could, and probably will want to get out of Baltimore, but I'm really hoping to keep him. He is the best QB in the league. I repeat that for the Bengals and Chiefs fans. The Baltimore Ravens have the best QB in the league. He only had a half-healthy number one wide receiver during his MVP year, and Greg Roman decided that he wasn't getting enough credit for Lamar's success. Uh, so he made a predictable and losing offense. Even though we won a lot with that offense, or, or it wasn't because of the scheme, it was because Lamar playing hero ball and Andrews dragging 10 grown men on his back for first downs and touchdowns. Well, no, let's, let's not discredit Greg Roman there. Uh, uh, he obviously has, has, has had his problems and issues and whatnot, but he obviously made his mark. He made his mark with the Baltimore Ravens, not just this season, but in other seasons too. Now we wish there would have been more growth and more consistency, better situational play calling and whatnot. But Greg Roman definitely was not all bad. Um, and with Lamar, Lamar had his issues too. He, he was not perfect. He obviously <laughs> did a lot. <laughs> did a whole lot, obviously. Um, but yeah, we ain't got to drag, drag Greg Roman down. But anyway, um, he said, uh, we absolutely need to hit on free agency and the draft. But I don't have much confidence in EDC being able to do so. Uh, I am glad we saw the report call for the Ravens staff. That was an eye-opener. The Ravens always brag about having a high, a high bar for health, but don't have the staff to keep folks healthy. It don't make sense. <laughs> I mean... I ain't even got no response for that because you, you said it like perfectly. Anyway, he said, I don't know the future, but I'm hoping Lamar signs an offer sheet and we meet or beat beat it and the tensions between him and the team get resolved. Yeah, I'm sure money, money can make all the problems go away. It can make all them problems go away. Like, again, you going back and forth with your boss, you frustrated like, man, I deserve a raise. And they're like, oh, yeah, you do deserve a raise, but we only want to give you this much. No, I deserve that much. Look at him, 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 her, her, her. They all got raises, too. We in the same position, and I do just as much, if not as more than them. So how, how come I ain't getting a raise like them? Y'all go back and forth, back and forth. You frustrated at your manager. You come to work angry every day. Being manager like, hey, come here. Come to my office. We, we got to talk. You know what? You do deserve it, and we're going to give it to you. Here, here, here's the offer letter. Uh, go ahead and sign so we can make this thing official. Oh, I ain't mad no more. I'm getting my bread. So it could be the same thing with Lamar. We'll see. Anyway, he said, I got a feeling that the Ravens may be playing checkers and the league is playing chess. Uh, <laughs> ain't it the other way around when it's good? What, what, what they say? Chess, not checkers, right? Yeah, they, but anyway. Oh, but he said it reverse. Anyway, he said they know they have a generational talent at quarterback that could and probably would have brought multiple rings to the franchise. But for some reason, they keep kicking dirt in his face over contracts. They know they can and will change in less than two years. Oof. Mm. Oh, yeah. You, you know how them contracts go. Because they'll say, oh, it'll be this much for this amount of years. Then they come back a couple years and they rework it. They redo it. They reconstruct it. Uh, you know how it goes. It happens all the time. Uh, he said, again, I will say we have the best QB in the league, and I hope we keep him. If we do, we'll see three-plus rings in the next five to seven years. Uh, if not, we'll become the Jags of the AFC North. Hold up now. Look, Jags just won a division. And Jags, they won a playoff game too. Trevor Lawrence went out there, threw four interceptions, then he came back and threw four touchdowns. So hold up now. 
Jags, they they on something right now. So, but so no, nah, they they that saying they'll be like the Jags right now. It's not a diss. It's not a diss. So, uh, but anyway, he said, I hope you're doing well. God bless. And like I hope Lamar isn't. I'm out. That was a fun question. Next question came from my guy Sidari, and he said, PQ for a player or pick. Will Lamar being tagged and the Ravens being on the hook until something is done? Free agency is going to be quiet in Baltimore. From my perspective, being quiet means being sneaky. So what's the sneak move? Ravens still have a wild card in their hand, and that card is a queen. Oh, I see. I like how you did that with the wordplay and, and the cards, and I like that. EDC was non committed on picking up Patrick Queen's fifth-year option, and with him removing Ravens from his social media, a trade is coming. Honestly, I think the deal's already done, but won't happen until draft night like last year. More than likely, it'll be four picks since the Ravens only have five. But I wonder if there are any players worthy of compensation for Patrick Queen, for example, wide receiver or cornerback. Uh, P.S. Shout out to you for not closing shop. Oh, no, no. We're we trying to keep this thing moving, man. Uh, and he said he forgot to include that Kyle Hamilton and Malik Harrison can fill in the loss for Patrick Queen. Uh, Ravens have also had luck with undrafted free agents in the past. Uh, Christian Welch and Moon. Uh, and don't forget about uh, is it Ross. Oh, I forget his name now. I, was he, wasn't he from Michigan? Was John Ross or Josh Ross? I think it's John Ross. I, I'm sorry. I think it's Josh. Maybe it's Josh Ross. I, I don't remember right now. But anyway. Um, so, yeah. But but anyway. Well, Patrick Queen. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think he will be traded. Uh, they haven't picked up his fifth year option. They have until May to do so. Um and Eric DeCosta was non-committal on it. Like even with Hollywood, with Hollywood, he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we anticipate picking up his fifth year option, trade it." <laughs> with Patrick Queen, they, they're like, "Oh, well, what? What did he say when?" It, but it, he he didn't say anything like that when it came to Patrick Queen. I forgot exactly what he said, but he was not like he was like with Hollywood. I guess he was like half committal, half committed, whatever. But Patrick Queen, no. There was no commitment at all. I think he said something like, "Oh, we haven't talked about it. We got to go over to something like." Yeah, I forgot what it was. Um, so yeah, I, I think he'll be traded. I do. I would love to see him play out this whole contract, but I, I don't see Eric DeCosta signing Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. Um, so I think Queen will get traded because again, Eric DeCosta most times uh, he does stuff early rather than late. Um, so I, I think Patrick Queen will end up being shipped out. Where? No clue. For what? Um, before I was saying a second round pick. Uh, so yeah, maybe like a second or, or a couple of thirds. I think that's what he would go for. And the last two questions on this episode came from my guy, Kevin. He said, why Lamar has no offers yet? What's good, Engraven? Hope you and the fam stay blessed. Hey, appreciate that, man. Every news channel I've seen are missing the fact that a team needs to wait until after the draft to make an offer on Lamar Jackson. It's a no-brainer. Get a draft pick that can help you this season. Set up your cap for this season. Try to sign Lamar with 2024 20, and 2025 first-round picks. They'll be lower picks and won't tie up your ability to draft in 2023. It makes all the sense in the world. Huh. Okay. I, I, I see what you're saying. Um, but still, uh, if, if you were to bring in Lamar now, you're just losing one pick from this year. Like, you just lose your 2023 first rounder. You still got second through seventh, whatever your situation is with the rest of them draft picks. Um, you still would be committing the money to him. So, I mean, uh, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't. Because, I mean, all this same stuff has to happen. If it don't happen this year, if you wait till after the draft, then it's just going to happen next year. Um, so, I, I think it's the same thing either way. But he also said, Ravens are a Super Bowl team with Lamar. And Raven heard you say the other day that the Ravens are not a Super Bowl ready team. I disagree. Yeah, I I just no, nah, I, I don't think they are. I know Lamar. Uh, obviously, he didn't finish the last two seasons, so we never fully got to completely see uh, the potential of this Ravens team in the playoffs both years. Um, and the, hey, that that could have changed, but I just feel like for what they have done and really what they haven't done at the receiver position, I feel like it would end up biting them in the butt. I, I really do and, and as far as the offense as well The offense just being very predictable It being just lackluster um, Them not using Even for the guys that they do have Them just not playing them to their strengths That's been a problem for a long time uh, That's why I just I didn't see them as a Super Bowl team I would obviously hope that they would get there Surprise me But anyway um, So he said I disagree First 
if you look at their defense and the amount of great to very good players playing in their second year uh, in the defense, it's scary. Oh, no, no, the defense, yeah, I think the defense could be Super Bowl ready. <laughs> I think they could be. Um, he said Roquan, Marcus Williams, Hamilton, Ajabo, Jones, and other players coming back with a year more. Humphrey, Queen, maybe. Uh, Washington, Pierce, Matabike, Bowser. Yeah, de defense, oh, yeah, yeah. Defense got it. I, I ain't worried about the defense. That, that, ain't, that ain't my issue. Well, actually, sometimes there were some issues. But, no, nah, defense should be straight. He said the Ravens are not doing a lot in free agency right now because they don't need a lot. They need a great rookie wide receiver and a number one wide receiver like Hopkins in their Super Super Bowl ready. If, if they get Lamar back with a new offensive coordinator, they'll be ready. See, with that, I could see it. That, that I, I, I could see it. Um, they, if they get a true number one guy and you pair him with uh, Rashad Bateman – and you, you draft a good rookie receiver too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you still got Duvernay finales. You still got Prochet finales. Still got Tyler Wallace finales. You could bring back Demarcus Robinson if you want to. Like, yeah, if, if they win it, like, and they kept Lamar. Because you still got Mark Andrews too. Offensive line, you just got to get a new left guard. Who going to play left guard? We'll see. So, yeah, you, you, you can make some stuff happen. You really can. Um, and that would really change a lot of my outlook on this team i would i, I have to see the offense too um i'll have to see how that they run their offense um but i would be a lot more optimistic if they went about it like that but will they Exit out the door. Yeah. Use his favorite team with a 